So here's my observatory, a green dome to be friendly to the neighbours. It blends in with the vegetation and the trees rather than a white one. Tell us what we might try and have a look at tonight. Build up a bit of suspense for me. Well, it's a moonless night. Uh, Jupiter's coming up. It's at opposition actually tomorrow and it'll be at its best. But if we're interested in Messier objects, um, almost due south at the moment is quite a nice globular cluster, M15 in Pegasus. Uh, so I think we'd start with that. This is a beautiful big globular cluster. It's one that's visible with binoculars. Um, it's one of the really well-known globular clusters. So it's a collection of a few hundred thousand very, very old stars. It's actually underneath our galaxy. So if you think of our galaxy as being, for the most part, a two-dimensional disk, kind of like a fried egg, and we live in one spiral arm in the middle of this fried egg, the globular cluster that we're talking about is actually located some distance outside this disk, actually underneath the galaxy from our own perspective. It's still part of our galaxy, but it's part of the larger, more extensive halo of the galaxy. First of all, the star that I can identify is called Enif, and it's in the constellation of Pegasus, and it's quite close to Messier 15, which is the globular cluster I want to look for. But if I sink to Enif and get that exactly in the middle of the field, the telescope will then find the globular cluster. In recent years, we've learned something really interesting about galaxies. And in particular, the mass of the bulge part of a galaxy, so the spherical component of its stars, is very intimately linked to the mass of the supermassive black hole at the center of the galaxy. And this extends over a wide and really astonishing range of masses. So we think that at the heart of most galaxies lurks a black hole 0.1% of the mass of the bulge. So even for the very small galaxies with a very small bulge, they still have a black hole that is 1,000th the size of the mass of that galaxy. And this leads us into really big questions about galaxy formation and evolution. There must be some mechanical link that's connecting the mass of the black hole to the mass of the galaxy. So what we really want to know is, does this relationship between black hole mass and bulge mass extend past the realm of the galaxies all the way down to the realm of the globular clusters? And M15 is just one such globular cluster where a lot of work has been done in this regard, which raises the question, what's at the middle of the globular cluster? So the telescope is now pointing to a well-known bright star, Enif, in the constellation of Pegasus. And I'm going to sync to target, which means I'm going to tell the telescope that it's pointing at Enif, and then the telescope can find Messier 15. So here we go, the telescope is going to swing again now. See, not far. <laughs> it only had to swing a very few degrees and that should have brought the Messier object into view. I'm dying to hear what you can say, I'm really excited. Right, can the bright light go off? <laughs> What's interesting about this globular cluster is as you look towards the centre of it, you see more and more stars. And even the astronomer William Herschel realised this when he looked at this with his own telescope back in 1814. And the motions of those stars may reveal that there's some sort of compact object lurking at the heart of that globular cluster. That might be a collection of stellar remnants like neutron stars and white dwarfs, or it might be a collapsed black hole of about a thousand times the mass of our sun. And these intermediate mass black holes in the range of about a thousand solar masses have been hypothesized, but they haven't yet been seen. So if one were discovered in the heart of M15 or some other globular cluster, that would be quite uh, a new discovery and quite an advance in our understanding, not just of globular clusters, but possibly of galaxies as well. Can I have a look at it, Roy? Yeah, you can, sure. You will, you will see straight away that it's not a star, it's a fuzzy, strange-looking object. Um, 
<coughs> brighter in the centre, getting dimmer as you go towards the edge. It looks a bit bigger than a star, but it's definitely fainter than the stars, isn't it? But it's kind of like just a, just a smudge. You would never tell that it was lots and lots of stars looking at it like this. Oh, now that now that Roy turned the light down, I can see it more clearly. It's kind of like it's kind of brighter in the centre, and then fades away as it goes to its edges. Do Are you know what, Roy? Yes. This is the first Messier object I've ever seen with my eye. Oh right, right. So Roy's just gone to go and get his camera, and he's going to put it on the telescope so you can see what I just saw. So just imagine you take. 100,000 stars or more and pack it into an area about 10 light years across. Now bear in mind that the distance from our sun to the next nearest star is only four light years. So in the terribly remote chance that there was a planetary system around one of these stars, just imagine what the night sky would look like. You wouldn't have a night sky. The sky would be ablaze with hundreds of thousands of suns. So that's it, is it? That's the object. I can now actually magnify it on screen. Okay, you can see thousands of stars and the camera's been able to record those just in 30 seconds.